Today we're going to mount some 15 inch wheels on the X19. Uh, it came from the factory with a 13 by 5 Chromadora. It's not, uh, not a whole lot you can do with these because uh, the supply of 13 inch tires is really limited and it's constantly changing. Uh, one of the big problems I'm having, the main reason I don't want to run those anymore is uh, I want to race this tire in a street tire class and I need rubber that's going to work for that. There's two or three tires that are capable. Uh, the BFG Rival S, the Bridgestone RE71R uh, are the two top picks. You can get both of those in a 15 inch tire. Uh, so what I have here, I got this from Allison Automotive and it's a 15 by six and a half with a four by 98 uh, bolt spacing and a 15 millimeter offset. Uh, should work really good on the back of the car. On the front of the car, I'm not so sure because it's lowered quite a bit. Uh, as you can see here from where it was at the factory location. And I've heard these tires will fit. They say if you go with a 195, 45, 15, uh, that's about all you can clear. And uh, well, we're going to find out because I really want to put 205s on this car eventually. What I have on, the, on here now are... Uh, Federal 595s. It's about the best tire that you're going to get uh, in that size. The only other options available are a Toyo. Uh, I'm not real fond of, of Toyo street tires. So uh, this might have enough grip to work for autocross and it might not. So uh, we're just going to have to find out and hopefully uh, if they don't have enough grip I'll be able to figure out how to put a 205 uh, in here. It's going to be very tight. So let's take a look and see how it fits. So for starters, let's take a look at the, the difference in size. Uh, it's not a whole lot bigger, so I'm, I'm pretty confident that it's going to work. We might have to do a little trimming of the plastic fender liners uh, for this to work. We'll see. And then I'll try it with and without the spacer that came with the, with the car to see which is going to look better. Now the problem with this spacer, one of the problems with this spacer, is that uh, it does, it's, there's nothing to line it up to the bolt holes and uh, it has so much play in it that you really have to fiddle around with it in order to get the bolts to go through. Uh, I, I'd like to just wing this if I can, because it wastes a lot of time. So if we just toss this on, first thing I'm going to notice is uh, there's not a lot of play in there. It fits on there really nicely, so I don't have to buy any kind of spacers or anything to uh, get that to mount up. The problem I am running into, though, is these bolts. It's hard to get any purchase on them. And I've got a narrow socket here, 19 millimeter, and fortunately that works. That'll go straight in there. So I won't have any problems with that. So far, so good. Uh, the, where the wheel goes up against the suspension is the only place where it's tight. You can't really see back there, but I've got um, just a, maybe just the tip of my finger space to clear against this strut. So, you know what? That's better than nothing, so I'll take it. Let's drop it down and see what happens. So full lock, it looks like we've got a little bit of rubbing right there. Um, but it looks like it's just on the fender liner, not on the fender itself. The other thing I want to check is inside, which we can't see with the camera. But I can feel it, and I have plenty of room. So really, the only thing I have to worry about is this little fender liner here, which I can remove super easy. 
Uh, as far as trying to fit a 205 on here, that's probably going to be one of the catch points. Uh, it might be the only catch point. I might have to modify this a little bit, which I'm kind of reluctant to do. a little bit too. So I'm not known for being real gentle with this car. Uh, it's kind of a worthless wonder. It seems like no matter how old they get or how well they restore them, you can never actually make any money off of them. So as long as it's worthless, I'm going to pound away. some good clearance. Get a little paint chip in there. Probably something I would be concerned about if this had a good paint job on it, but it's garbage. I'm going to do the same thing up here on the top. Well, that looks pretty good. Let's just check what happens when I turn the wheel all the way. Let's see if we clean that up a little bit. Okay, and we have daylight. Not a lot, but that's enough. So I think uh, all we have to do is remove the fender liner. So I'll hit that up with a, clean it up, hit it up with a little bit of spray paint. I have some, uh, some rubberized coating that I can put on there and it'll make that look a little bit nicer and protect it too. So far so good. I have very nice fitment on the front. Better than I had hoped for. On the back of this car, as I said, uh, sometimes there's trouble finding tires. So what's on there right now is a 185 70 13. And believe it or not, it's actually a little tiny bit taller than this Federal 595. Uh, and I know from running my 14 inch Panasports that I can fit a 205 uh, tire on the back of here. So I'm not going to have any concerns at all about that. So the bottom line is if you want to run 205 5015s, uh, I don't think it's going to be much of an issue in the back. The front is not going to fit without a spacer and then once you put that spacer to get around the suspension, uh, then there's the front fender, the front of the fender. It'd probably have to be uh, cut away a little bit and then uh, we might be able to sneak it under the top of the fender especially if we're rolling it a little bit. Uh, I think it's definitely doable but not without some uh, additional work. Let's see what this looks like. So in the back, up against the suspension, I can fit my can fit my fingers all the way through in there. Uh, looks like there's plenty of room here in the fender well too. If I were to run a 205 on here, uh, I might have to roll these just a little bit, but I don't think there's any issue at all running a 205 on the back. So. Uh
got back from the racetrack. I wanted to test these tires and uh, boy did I get a great opportunity. Uh, we started off beginning of the night with uh, a torrential downpour it happened right after I took the target top off and started out on the track. Uh, so we were racing in the rain, uh, standing water, cars spinning out everywhere and uh, these Federal 595s with the big sipes on them and, and fresh rubber full tread uh, acquitted themselves quite nicely. Uh, they handled the rain just fine. Uh, then later on uh, I went out again and uh, the track was in drying up conditions. Uh, again it did just fine, it was predictable and then we finally got to a full dry track at the end of the night and uh, I was turning pretty decent lap times, you know, comparable to what I was running on my R compound tires before. So hopefully those results will be similar when I'm autocrossing because uh, I would really like this car to be competitive. I did run into uh, one issue while I was out driving. Actually, it shut me down for the rest of the night. My Allison exhaust broke again. Uh, so I've had this exhaust for Oh, a couple of years now, I'd say I've run less than 10,000 miles on it. Uh, so the problem I was having with it in the first place was uh, this boom. Uh, it's the best muffler that they have to offer, but it's really loud. Uh, around 3,000, 4,000 RPM, right at the speed when you're out on the highway or if you're on a backcountry road. Right at that sweet spot where you want to be is where it was intolerable. Uh, so I wear earplugs. Uh, and then I finally got around to uh, trying a Super Trap muffler, which worked great. Uh, show it to you. So here's a Super Trap. Uh, it doesn't weigh much. It's probably, I don't know, maybe four or five pounds. Uh, so I, I'll show you what I did. I cut the exhaust pipe down. It was a couple inches longer. Uh, and that way I can just slide this right on here with an 11 millimeter bolt uh, or nut comes right off slides off for when I want to race and when I want to drive to work it's nice and quiet. Uh, I don't know if that was what caused the first fail but I'll show you what the first failure looks like. If you can see up there this is the first place where I had a failure. The bracket where it attaches to the pipe ripped so I had to get that welded and fixed and then last night the big surprise I uh, went from pretty quiet to full loud right here and that is the catalytic converter uh, as the exhaust gas exits the catalytic converter it fails to go into that pipe now which makes it really loud uh, this is an engineering problem part of it is these springs and the way that this exhaust is designed to sit in here really isn't intended to be used very much and when you go bombing down backcountry roads that are chip sealed and bumpy with a stiff suspension and then you go out on a racetrack and there's a lot of torque from the motor moving around uh, something's gonna give and unfortunately this, this isn't uh, of the quality that I need it to be so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do next Okay, so I've removed the Allison, the uh, bottom half of the exhaust here. That's the high flow cat, which I guess we're going to get a chance to take a look at. Uh, the Flowmaster muffler. And, uh, you know, the more I think about it, the more I think about other issues that I've had. Uh, the first thing that happened was that they kept on coming loose. So I ended up buying some of these crimp nuts. Uh, they're just crimped a little bit so that as you put them on, they tend to not come back loose again. So that was the first thing I think that I had to fix with this. Second thing, this gasket failed really, really early on. So uh, I ended up buying a copper gasket replacement, which has worked just fine. Uh, again, third fail then would be this weld right here. I had a tear. I had to have that welded back together again. And now the fourth fail, really the epic fail here is this catalytic converter came loose from the pipe uh, which ended my race day so thanks for that 
putting this all together, my Fiat ownership, uh, you know, people joke about fix it again, Tony. Uh, those cars are so unreliable, they're always breaking down. And, you know, so here's some of the problems that I've had. Uh, this is an aftermarket piece, it's broken four times now. My coilovers, I had a problem racing with those because the camber kept on going out of alignment because of the way they were designed. It wasn't a Fiat part. I have an aftermarket radiator. Fantastic radiator, all aluminum, it's got electric fans, and it's lightweight, and it leaks. And it's aftermarket. Leaks at the welds. And uh, other people are experiencing the same problem. Uh, I appreciate that we have vendors and people who are working to make performance parts for our car. I really do, because I would be nowhere without them. Uh, but it just goes to show that when you when you're driving your car hard, when you're using your car, it's going to fail. I just wish it didn't fail so often.